In this clip, Joe and Aaron discuss Stanley Myers, the man that created the water-powered car and the mysterious circumstances around his demise. Check it out. The guy who created the water car yelled, they've been po they, poisoned they poisoned me. me. And then he dies? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Research gone. Can you imagine you're some Texas oil guy and you find out about some dipshit in Long Island that figured out a water car? Like, can't we send someone up there to send talk a to this boys fella? Up there. Yeah, like you're realizing your empire is about to collapse in front of your face. And the fact that it actually happened. Yeah, yeah. What happened to the water car? Apparently you drive across the whole country on a tank or something. <laughs> <laughs> that water car guy, what was the official cause of death? Uh, aneurysm. Stanley Myers is his name. Yeah, they got him with the old aneurysm gun. There's been a few of those guys, though, who Whoopsies. found some, some other ways of, of doing it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what a coincidence. Out. What a coincidence that a guy who develops an engine that runs on three quarters of the Earth's surface that everybody has coming out of their tap, that everybody has, there's, it's everywhere. You can buy it at the store. It's in your swimming pool. You swim in it, and that could be fuel. And it would just, what would it release? Mist? Nothing. That makes too Steam. much sense. Yeah. Now, probably be good for the environment. Probably help the trees. Yeah, but climate change. We're spreading all that mist out there. Probably help the trees grow. Be nice. Be greener. <laughs> you know? We plant some more trees. Imagine if that did it and all of a sudden Los Angeles started raining all the time. This is actually a pretty interesting story that I think deserves to be told in full. So here it is. An inventor named Stanley Meyer captured the imagination of many with his bold claim of creating a car powered by water. His invention promised to revolutionize the automotive industry by offering a vehicle that could run without gasoline, relying instead on an abundant and inexpensive resource, water. However, Meyer's life ended abruptly under mysterious circumstances, sparking decades of speculation, conspiracy theories, and debate about the feasibility of his technology. This story delves into Meyer's life, his controversial invention, the events surrounding his death, and the lingering questions that continue to fuel intrigue. Stanley Meyer was an American inventor born in the mid-20th century, known for his work in electronics and his fascination with alternative energy solutions. Growing up in Ohio, Meyer displayed an early aptitude for science and engineering. By the 1980s, he had turned his attention to a groundbreaking idea, a car that could run on water. At the time, the world was grappling with energy crises, including skyrocketing oil prices and growing concerns about environmental pollution. The concept of a water-powered vehicle was tantalizing, promising to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and mitigate the environmental impact of transportation. Meyer's invention centered around what he called a water fuel cell. Unlike traditional engines that burned gasoline, Meyer claimed his device could split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen through a process he described as highly efficient electrolysis. The hydrogen would then serve as the fuel to power the vehicle, with oxygen as a byproduct. According to Meyer, his technology required minimal energy input, making it a viable alternative to conventional engines. He modified a dune buggy to demonstrate his concept, claiming it could travel significant distances on just a few gallons of water. The idea of a water-powered car was met with both excitement and skepticism. Supporters saw it as a potential game-changer, a solution to the world's energy woes. Demonstrations of Meyer's modified dune buggy reportedly showed it running smoothly, with water as the apparent fuel source. These displays attracted attention from investors, media, and even some scientists curious about the technology's potential. Meyer filed several patents related to his water fuel cell, detailing a system that used high-voltage pulses to break water molecules apart more efficiently than traditional electrolysis methods. However, the scientific community raised significant doubts. Critics argued that Meyer's claims defied the laws of thermodynamics, particularly the principle of energy conservation. Splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen requires substantial energy, often more than the energy produced by burning the resulting hydrogen. Skeptics contended that Meyer's device would need an external power source, such as a battery, to sustain the electrolysis process, undermining the claim that it ran solely on water. Some accused Meyer of perpetual a hoax, suggesting his demonstrations relied on hidden fuel sources or misrepresented the technology's capabilities. 
Despite the skepticism, Meyer pressed forward, seeking to commercialize his invention. He attracted interest from investors, including two Belgian businessmen who saw potential in his technology. By the late 1990s, Meyer was reportedly on the verge of securing significant funding to further develop and market his water-powered car. His vision extended beyond automobiles. He spoke of applying the technology to other energy needs, such as heating homes or powering machinery, all using water as a clean, renewable fuel source. On March 20, 1998, Meyer's life took a dramatic and tragic turn. While dining at a restaurant in Grove City, Ohio, with his brother and the two Belgian investors, Meyer suddenly became ill. According to accounts, he ran outside, gasping for air, and collapsed. His final words were reportedly, they poisoned me. He died shortly after, at the age of 57. The official coroner's report listed the cause of death as a cerebral aneurysm, a condition that can be triggered by various factors, including high blood pressure or, in rare cases, toxins. However, the abruptness of his death, combined with his dramatic final statement, fueled speculation that foul play was involved. The timing of Meyer's death raised eyebrows. He had been in discussions with investors and was reportedly close to securing the resources needed to bring his technology to market. To many of his supporters, the idea that powerful interests, such as oil companies or government entities, might have wanted to suppress his invention seemed plausible. The notion of a water-powered car threatened the established energy industry, which relied heavily on fossil fuels. Conspiracy theories emerged suggesting that Meyer had been silenced to prevent his technology from disrupting the global economy. Skeptics, however, offered alternative explanations. Some pointed to Meyer's legal troubles as a source of stress that could have contributed to his health issues. In the early 1990s, Meyer faced a lawsuit from investors who claimed he had misled them about the capabilities of his water fuel cell. A court-ordered examination by experts concluded that the device was not as revolutionary as claimed, relying on conventional electrolysis rather than a groundbreaking new process. The court ruled against Meyer, ordering him to repay the investors. This legal setback damaged his credibility and may have added financial and emotional strain in the years leading up to his death. Another perspective suggests that Meyer's death was a tragic coincidence unrelated to his invention. Cerebral aneurysms can occur suddenly and without warning, and Meyer's reported symptoms, sudden collapse and difficulty breathing, are consistent with such an event. The claim of poisoning, some argue, could have been a result of confusion or paranoia in his final moments. Toxicology reports from the time did not indicate the presence of poison, though conspiracy theorists have questioned the thoroughness of the investigation. The debate over Meyer's water-powered car extends beyond his death to the technology itself. Proponents argue that his work was suppressed because it threatened powerful industries. They point to other historical examples of alternative energy technologies that faced resistance, suggesting a pattern of suppression by corporate or government interests. Some enthusiasts have attempted to replicate Meyer's water fuel cell based on his patents, claiming varying degrees of success. Online forums and communities continue to discuss his ideas, with some believing that advancements in materials science or energy storage could make his concept viable today. Critics, however, maintain that the water-powered car remains a scientific impossibility without significant external energy input. Modern hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, such as the Toyota Mirai or Honda Clarity, use hydrogen stored in tanks, not water, as their fuel source. Producing hydrogen through electrolysis still requires more energy than it yields, making it an inefficient efficient process for powering vehicles. While hydrogen fuel cells are a promising technology, they rely on complex infrastructure for hydrogen production and storage, far removed from Meyer's vision of a car running directly on water. The legacy of Stanley Meyer is a complex one. To some, he was a visionary whose ideas were ahead of his time, a martyr for the cause of alternative energy. To others, he was a misguided inventor whose claims did not hold up under scrutiny. The truth likely lies in a gray area. Meyer may have genuinely believed in his technology, even if its practical application was limited by the scientific constraints of his era. His story resonates because it taps into a universal desire for clean, abundant energy and a suspicion of powerful institutions that might suppress such innovations. Decades after his death, the mystery of Stanley Meyer and his water-powered car endures. It is a tale of ambition, controversy, and tragedy, one that continues to inspire both hope and skepticism. Whether his technology was a breakthrough or a mirage, Meyer's story reminds us of the challenges faced by those who dare to challenge the status quo. His death, shrouded in uncertainty, ensures that the legend of the water-powered car will persist, a symbol of what might have been or what might still be possible in the future. Thank you for watching comment below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. Have a good one.